What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. And today, we are going to focus on recent sales for nothing but vintage Star Wars card backs. That's right, just the cards. And I want to say thanks to Turd Ferguson. He was a uh, he is a subscriber that suggested uh, that we take a look at some recent sales and the prices for a number of these. While I knew roughly about where they go for, a few of these really shocked me. And so you'll have to stay tuned because some of the ones towards the end were just mind blowing in terms of the final price. But I've picked everything from 12 back A's all the way uh, into the Palatoy Tri Logo uh, last 17 figures. And uh, for the most part, like everything else, Star Wars, vintage Star Wars especially, the prices are going way up recently. And most of these auctions or sales on eBay date from December until now, March. So it's within the last two or three months. There are a number of Facebook groups devoted to nothing but cardbacks. So be sure to go on, on Facebook and check those out because I think the prices will be a lot better for the most part. Uh, also, deal or no deal group on Facebook. There are a lot of, of card back sales there as well. So don't just rely on eBay, but nevertheless, I think for the point, for the purposes of amalgamating a number of data points, eBay's great, and that's why I use it for a lot of these videos. Let's start out with a 12 back A Harbert 1977 Italian market, Gero Stellari, Ben Obi Wan Kenobi. Look how beautiful this card back is. And, you know, a lot of the prices for these card backs are tied to a couple things. First, it'll be whether it's a foreign market card like this. This is a beautiful Italian card. It's got all the Italian language on the back. It also is tied to condition. So if it's got the, the proof of purchase cut out or if it's heavily ripped on the front where you can't see the, the card art that much, this one's a super clean one where the, the blister was taken off fairly cleanly. So uh, it's in much better shape than some can be. Uh, also, if it's got any writing on it, uh, those will affect the price. And I'm going to dig into also some other factors that that affect the price of these card backs as we look at them. But this one was su super clean, and it's an early 12-back Italian Harbert. You can see the Harbert logo in the upper left. That one sold for $271 on January 30th, 29 bids plus $3 shipping. So really nice item, really nice item. And, uh, you know, I, I think mint on card, you know, this is probably pushing $2,000 or more depending on the grade. So uh, this is a nice alternative. If you're willing to just collect the card backs like this, this is a nice, uh, a little bit cheaper alternative. Um, and let's see what else we got here. Next, we've got a really rare one. This is a Toll Toys Hammerhead 20 back. So this was for the New Zealand and Australian market. You can see the Toll Toys logo there in the lower right-hand corner. Now, this is one maybe that's not nearly as clean as the Harbor that we just looked at. You can see a lot of the card on the card stuff on the, the, the card art on the front is kind of ripped. So that will affect the price negatively. But you also have to remember that these Toll Toys card backs are extremely rare, extremely rare. Anything with a Toll, Toy, Toll Toys logo on it, uh, you're going to be paying quite a bit for it. And this is an early 20 back. I mean, this is as rare as it gets in terms of probably the quantity of mint on cards that are out there. There's not a lot of them. This one sold for $370 plus $32 shipping. And this was down in Australia, as you would expect, where a lot of those Toll Toys card backs are located. Uh, here was an interesting one. And we're going to be digging into a lot of Boba Fett card backs, as you'd expect. We all know that Boba Fett in general it's just gone through the roof. Well, it's it's the same for the card backs. Anything from uh, Return of the Jedi card backs to 20 back card backs uh, and everything in between, Empire Strikes Back, they all sell for a lot of money. And it's just because the mint on cards have, have gone up so much in value. The loose graded have gone up so much in value that it's only natural that the, the card backs and things like this with the blister uh, have gone up in price. Now, one thing I want to note is if you need to see an example of how you could use something like this, go check out Five Idiots Talking Toys. Charles over there, he just got back from Collector Archive Services some Boba Fetts where one was the, the loose figure with the blaster displayed in front of a card back. He also submitted one like this where the blister was still partially attached and put the figure back inside and had it kind of loose graded that way. So I think part of it is that Collector Archive Services and UKG also does this. 
they grade they loose grade the figures either in front of a, a card back or like this with the blister. Uh, we'll put it back inside and just loose grade the figure. So those that has driven the market, I think, to a certain extent. And this one sold for four hundred and twenty dollars plus four dollars shipping. Uh, next up, we've got a Kenner nineteen seventy nine. 21 21 back card back now this has got a toys r us sticker which you know in my opinion if you're gonna get a card back i would get it as clean as possible so having that in my opinion ugly toys r us sticker block off part of the card back i would pay a little bit less for it personally but nevertheless this still sold for 750 dollars, and it did come with the figure the figure did look to be in pretty good shape it's not mint but uh it's the dark green chest typical hong kong figure some some light wear to it, probably like a 75-ish kind of grade to it, maybe 80 at the low end. Uh, yeah, I'd say 75. You can see it's got some wear to the to the figure, um, but not a lot. But the card back also wasn't super clean on the back, it, you know. So I, I would call it kind of 75-ish grade for the figure plus the card back. Someone paid 750 for it. And I think that if, you know, again, if you've gotten a high grade Boba Fett, like an 85-ish kind of quality Boba Fett and then displayed it in front of this card, um, you could get some pretty big money for it. I mean, that's what a lot of collectors are doing. Um, next up, we had a, a really rare one in my mind. This was a beautiful Palatoy Empire Strikes Back car back. It did have a lot of heavy creasing, but for the most part, the card art was in pretty good shape. And you can see the entire Palatoy logo on the front. So this is something that's pretty desirable, and the price reflected that. To me, I would rather have this than I would that 21 back card back that was pretty that was kind of uh, damaged on the front and the back. I would much rather have this one because these Palatoy uh, items, especially Empire Strikes Back Palatoy card backs, they're, they're pretty expensive uh, or you know mint on card they are. So something like this would be very desirable. And I don't know which one you'd pair it with. I mean, it, it, I guess potentially it could be a Hong Kong figure. It could be a Palatoy No COO Tri Logo card. I, or, but you know, it does say made in Hong Kong. So I would assume for these ESB Palatoy car backs, you could probably pair it with a Hong Kong figure. I, I don't know. You'd have to ask an expert on that. But anyway, this car bag did sell for five hundred dollars plus ten dollars shipping. So that was a pretty big number. Um, here was another one. This was a, a forty-five back card bag. This has got the 45 back offer on there and it also has the palatoy logo so another really nice desirable one now this one did have some damage to the card and the price reflected that it sold for 350 dollars you can see where now i think correct me if i'm wrong but a lot of palatoy uh, card backs they, they are missing the nameplate because that's what you would send in in, in lieu of a per, proof of purchase like u.s buyers did u.s buyers when they sent in these offers they would send in the the uh, proof of purchase but if folks over in the UK, uh, they would send over the nameplate, and you can see where it's kind of been cut there um, on the card back, kind of partially cut. But uh, very cool item, and, you know, again, it went for a little bit of a discount relative to the other one. Uh, next up, we had a 41 back card back. This is the U.S. card. Now, this is quite a bit cleaner, but it's also a lot more common than the Palatoid card backs. So, again, the price reflected that. It did have a price sticker in the upper corner, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very clean card with pretty minimal damage from the blister removal. And that one sold for $305. So, another data point there. And you can see it's a little bit of a discount relative to the Palatoy card backs. Here was another really good one. This one was a Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. Very clean overall. It did have the coin offer sticker as well. So, it's got the Boba Fett coin offer on a Boba Fett Return of the Jedi card back. So that's pretty desirable to have. It's kind of a, a double Boba Fett, if you will. And given how clean that card is, it sold for a big number, $450 plus $3 shipping. So, um, you know, it's just kind of the next leg for a lot of collectors who don't have the budget for a mint on card Boba Fett. They, you know, they're going to look at potentially getting these card backs, pairing them with a figure. And I'm not saying everybody does it, but a lot of folks do. Um, you know, buy these and pair them with the figure and then send them in for, for kind of encasement together. It's, it, it looks really nice and it gives you the feel of a mint on card without spending four grand on one of these, on one of those true mint on card figures. Um, I also pulled up just for fun. I, I, pull, I did pull up a few lots. Uh, this is one of them. These were all Empire Strikes Back card backs and they were all in really great shape. You can see how clean the cards were. There was a Boba Fett in there as well. That's a Star Wars uh, 21 back Boba Fett, uh, but the rest of these were all ESBs and for a lot of really desirable characters. 
that sold for $2,877 on 19 bids. So a uh, big, big number, but I mean, you can see how clean those, those cards are where, you know, it was very clear that the, the blister portion that was attached to the card was left on the card when they took the figure off. And, uh, and so those, those are kind of as, as close to near mint as you can get for a card back after removing the figure. Um, here was another lot that was really interesting. These were all Palatoy ESB card backs. Um, some of them, if not all of them, still had the blister attached. So this, these would make ideal candidates to use to send in to UKG or to collector archive services. This was over in the UK, but this would have been really desirable to pick up some no COO figures or something. Uh, maybe some Hong Kongs. It just depends on on the correct match. You would have to, to check with some of the experts on that. But uh, those would be really cool to get loose graded with those awesome card backs because mint on card. I mean, we just covered one recently where a Palatoy uh, Hoth Rebel Trooper sold for like fifteen hundred dollars. So it's it's a nice viable alternative. That one, uh, this lot sold for five hundred and thirty six U S dollars or four hundred Great British pounds. So it's a big number, but still a lot cheaper than if you wanted to buy. Uh, a mint on card. Now, this was another one that was really desirable. This was a Yoda Herb Herbert 35 back. And so this has got the beautiful Garastellare ESB card art with the Harbert logo. It did have quite a bit of creasing on it, but give me a break. Look how amazing that item is. I have no idea what, what kind of figure would be perfectly matched with this. Um, it says made in Hong Kong, so I guess potentially you could use a Hong Kong figure, but uh, I just, I, I don't know enough about it uh, as to which one would go on this Harbert card back. But look how beautiful that Yoda card is with uh, with the Harbert Italian language. That one sold for $300 plus $8 shipping. Uh, next, we had a transition card. This is another uh, line of collectibles that a lot of people ha like to collect the card art because mint on card, these are very, very expensive. I do, I do know a few collectors on Instagram that do collect these mint on card and I can only imagine what they pay for those mint on card because they're very very pricey but for a short time uh, Kenner would use the Empire Strikes Back card backs and slap a Return of the Jedi sticker over the top of them and it was is for the Canadian market and you can see here very clearly that there's a black sticker with Return of the Jedi uh, on the front of that card back over top of the ESB and so this is R2D2 sensor scope and it, you can see the Canadian card back there. It's got the, the French language there in the upper right, as well as on that offer sticker. So mint on card, this is probably a thousand dollar plus item, if not more. Um, but the you can see here on the back, it's got the uh, Empire Strikes Back in French language. L'Empire contre attaque, la guerre des étoiles. So uh, this was uh, a U.S. card with the Admiral Akbar offer. And they just, you know, again, slap that sticker on there. So this is like a transition sticker. Really, really desirable. That sold for $208. And again, that's a nice viable budget alternative if you wanted to pair that with a loose figure. This to me was probably the biggest shocker. I had no idea that the Luke Gunner card back, the alternate card for Luke Skywalker on the Return of the Jedi for the Return of the Jedi US Kenner market. I had no idea that it, this had gotten so expensive. This sold for $810 just for the card back. Now, a couple of years ago, this would have been mint on card, probably a thousand, twelve hundred. I think very safely that the Luke Gunner on a decent card, mint on card, you're probably talking two thousand dollars plus now. And I've seen that's about where I've seen it sell regularly is two thousand to twenty five hundred, anywhere in that ballpark, depending on grade. It might be higher by now. I have no idea, but I was shocked to see this at auction sell for eight hundred and ten dollars on twenty four bids that sold on January twenty second. So, very very desirable to get that Luke Gunner card back. Uh, now, I've got a few Lily Letty car backs. So these were made for the Mexican market. I've got a number of these where I have paired the Lily Letty figure with the Mexican market Lily Letty car back. And one of the more desirable ones uh, is the Squid Head because Squid Head, as you guys know, uh, there is a burgundy cape version of the Squid Head. I've got that one not paired with the car back, but just loose graded. And uh, to the car, I've known that this card back has always been pretty expensive. And it's always been kind of in that six six hundred to six fifty range, and that's where this one sold on February fifteenth. It sold for six hundred and sixty dollars on twenty one bids. Now the interesting thing about the Lily Letty card backs is that there's two different types. There's negative card backs like this one, where it's all black, uh, 